So welcome everybody to the Open Active Adoption Engagement Forum on Friday, the 27th of October, 2023. Um, we have a fairly uh, cozy meeting today, which I think is um, possibly down to kind of it being half term and things like that. Um, so there's uh, potentially be a, a slightly shorter meeting today, but we'll, we'll see how we get on. A usual reminder, I don't think this applies to anyone on the call, but if anyone is catching up with the recording and you're new to Open Active, then please do join our Open Active Slack workspace. Um, and the link to these slides will be in the description uh, below the video. So please click through and you can find the link there or just uh, manu manually uh, type that link in and you should, should get the opportunity to join up. Um, and uh, that's a great place to keep up to date with everything going on with Open Active. Um, we have a slightly shorter agenda today. Um, the main uh, item that we'll be talking about is around the Open Active uh, Marketplace or System Friday's Guide on the Open Active website. Um, and then there'll be uh, a chance for uh, the people on the call to um, discuss anything else that, that is going on or, or provide any updates. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I will just as it's something we we usually do and just in case uh, anyone is new watching the recording um just go around very quickly um with some introductions and so i'll start with myself my name is tim corby and i'm an engagement consultant at the open data institute and part of the open active project team within within the open data institute that works on um on stewarding the open active initiative uh, on behalf of the sector um and i will pass to my colleague darren who's also at the odi Hi, oh, yeah, I'm Darren Temple, consultant and data technologist at the ODI, uh, working on Open Active um, with my technologist hat on, helping the, the tech needs of the project. Thank you, Thanks. Darren. Uh, Grace? Um, so, yeah, I'm Grace. I work for SAS um, as their Open Data Project Officer, and I look after their Activity Finder. Thank you very much. And just in case anyone doesn't know SASP. Oh, SASP is uh, somebody's Activity and Sports Partnership. So thank it's the um, active partnership for Somerset. <laughs> Great, thank you. And uh, Jules? Yeah, I'm Jules, York Sport Foundation. I'm the communication manager. And I've been uh, working with Open Active and Finders for many, many years. Brilliant, thank you very much. And so, yeah, I'll just kick straight off with um, the item we have on the agenda then. So I wanted to start with giving a quick uh, bit of background um, and if either of you are on the call or if you're watching the recording and you, you want to know exactly which page I'm talking about, if you go to the Open Active homepage, um, in the very top right of corner of the screen, um, there should be a little link that says System Providers Guide, I think it says. Um, so if you click on that, that will take you to this page I'm, I'm talking about. Um, and yeah, just so give you a kind of bit of background on where this page came from and how we got to the point where we're at today. So. Um, it kind of was created um, as a, a place uh, or a showcase for um, booking systems that were open active compliant to enable people who are wanting to publish open active data, um, sort of activity providers, um, leisure operators, facilities, wh whoever that might be, um, to be able to find a, a booking system that was open active compliant. And originally, it was a, a kind of very dry uh, kind of table almost like a, a spreadsheet um which had a list of um list of different systems and then various sort of bits of information about them um, and and what services they provided um and but it was it was kind of about a year or two ago it was kind of felt by the people in the community that it wasn't a particularly user friendly page and it was quite hard for people to visually kind of see what the different systems were and, and work out who they were and everything um and uh an organization called playways who, who some of you might be familiar with um had created uh, what they were calling a kind of marketplace um which was much more visual and and uh kind of user friendly um and so there was a desire to kind of replicate that with with the open active system providers guide um and that's what the current current page um that is on the Open Active website that's live there now is based on, um, and that's been in place now for about a year or so, I think. Um, as it's gone along, it's kind of morphed a bit and now lists organizations that aren't necessarily 
just systems so even though it's still kind of labeled as a system provider guide it is kind of a bit broader than that um and that's kind of how we've got to the point we're at today and why we're we're kind of thinking it probably needs changing and tweaking and updating a little bit is that it doesn't really reflect the kind of breadth of services that are offered by different organizations within the open active community and the open active initiative um and it doesn't really help users who are going to the open active website looking to use one of those services or, or needing one of those services to find the right organization the right the you know connect up with the right place and the right system that that meets their needs so that's that's kind of how we've got to where we are um and a bit of background of of that journey so we've done a bit of thinking uh, within the kind of odi team about where we go next um and what we've done is we've tried to create a bit of a list of services that are offered by different organizations in in open active um, and we've come up with this list of kind of seven um but really the the idea of the session today and, and discussion today was to to kind of get gauge opinion and thoughts as to whether these uh list of services are reflective of what's being offered in the open active initiative um whether there's any on there that people think kind of aren't really um needed or or you know aren't, aren't really one that should be on there or or perhaps any that more importantly any that are missing that, that we've kind of not thought of or, or missed out um and I, so i'll just run through through them quickly um the the first one is fairly straightforward just kind of free or low cost um entry level data publishing um which is just the ba basic kind of open active data the basic opportunity data um about an activity or um a facility use slot like a, a squash court or badminton court or tennis court whatever that might be um and there's a few examples such as like open sessions and, and sports suite if um you know you you live within a, a active partnership area or or um an area where there's an organization that has a sports suite um, finder that that you can register for um those kind of things where it's is free or low cost for the activity provider to register it and and you know do some some basic data publishing of, of basic opportunities um then there's the kind of ones that are traditionally what have been on the system providers guide or, or marketplace or whatever you want to call it and, that, and that's the kind of main booking systems the bookings management systems that enable um, large activity and facility providers like a, a leisure operator for example to to manage their bookings um and uh the you know it's a system that's open active compliant and enables those um those activity providers to to publish their data and possibly even um also add booking data onto that as well um so yeah rather than just necessarily the the kind of basic opportunity data it might give them the opportunity to add that that booking data as well uh, then we have activity finders uh, and um i think most people in in open active will be really familiar with those that there's a kind of a few different examples of um platforms out there that that different organizations can use kind of white label activity finders that you can plug into your into your own website and, and rebrand um and, and kind of consume open active data feeds and and then publish those um in a or display those opportunities to the end users being the, the people who are wanting to be active um and then the last one on the on the left hand side of the slide um we've called bookings broker um and basically what we mean by that is an activity finder platform which also has the added functionality of being able to do bookings within that platform um so if you see uh, an opportunity to go along to a yoga class um, rather than finding it on your activity finder and then having to click through a link to go to the yoga instructor website to make the actual booking, you can do, the, do all of that booking within the activity finder platform itself. Um, obviously, that is reliant on uh, the data, the booking data <laughs> being available as well. Um, but that's the kind of distinction between activity finders and the and the bookings broker. Um, and that and that's kind of the end um user experience which a lot of open active has tried to 
drive towards being the, the kind of end goal but um yeah the, there's maybe perhaps not a hu huge amount of that data um around at the moment but yeah um there are some platforms that offer that um and then the kind of ones on the right are slightly more broad services we've got kind of broad data cleaning and aggregation services and um, so that's organizations that can take the raw data raw open active data feeds and then um clean clean that data um and provide custom or, or filtered um data feeds from from the raw data to um activity finder platforms and there's a couple of organizations that offer in that um just as an example probably um the most well-known one in open active design in but i think there are a, a couple of others who probably do do that sort of stuff as well um and then the last two uh just kind of broad advisory services both uh, more consultancy services for for specific organizations to help them understand and implement open active um and then kind of engagement and outreach um which again i think there's a few and possibly active partnerships would be a good example of that as well the, the ones that kind of provide engagement and outreach to advocate for open active um and explain the principles behind it to, to others and, and with the aim of trying to grow the initiative and, and get more people using it so so that's the kind of list we've come up with um that's kind of all i wanted to cover today and then i, I was going to open up the floor but i know the floor is fairly small <laughs> today but it'd be great if um i review on the call uh jules or grace if you if you've got any thoughts on that initially um or any questions uh or if any of that doesn't make sense I mean, I think it's great to um, have them all split up like that. I think it'll be easier. It's sort of, yeah, like when I first saw that page, I was like, well, I don't, you sort of don't know which one's best to mo not market, sort of sell to people. Um, yes, I think it'd be great to like have them uh, broken down a little bit. Cool. Thank you, Grace. Yeah, that's kind of the thinking that we have behind it is that at the moment there's it's quite hard if you're a, an organization new to open active and you land on that page to kind of know exactly what different services are being offered by the different organizations that are listed and, and exactly which one is the one that you're looking for and which organizations therefore are the ones that you can use and, and the ones that you should try and get in touch with or compare compare against for the sake of simplicity i've i've probably put the two booking together the two booking as in booking management and bookings broker yeah or do you mean the entry level data publishing and the booking management no the the booking management and broker they seem okay. to there's quite a lot of overlap yeah i guess so i, th I think it's just that the difference is one is publishing the data and one is uh kind of consuming and displaying that that data um so uh the the booking management would be a, a kind of booking system where an activity provider like a, a leisure operator or a sports club or whoever would use that platform to manage their bookings and um and uh yeah take take money uh, and publish publish the data um to open active so um that could be just the opportunity data so that could just be the you know what time the session is where it is um a link through to a website you know where the sport club website or the leisure center website where that that person can then book through um whereas the bookings broker is basically an activity finder platform where people can find the activity but can then also book the activity within the activity finder platform itself they don't have to click through to to the booking management system and i, I kind of see what you mean that they both kind of in a way take bookings but uh, you know, there's that that slight distinction that that one is kind of consuming the open active booking data and displaying it in a new way to to different audience, uh, and the booking management is um, actually enabling the sport club or leisure operator or whoever to to manage those bookings. Okay, that that, that makes, makes sense. sense. The the only thing I would have said with the the first one is that essentially, as we we have. Uh, sports suite um open sessions where people there's just two systems and they're not really geographical 
So you you could put go into any sports suite uh, active partnership and upload your stuff nationally, and then it, it'll just appear nationally. It, it's not particularly tied to it. I think that that would probably come in with things like NGVs, who if they've got just things they need to publish nationally, they could do it through any open sessions or I'm in. It doesn't particularly need to be tied into any active partnership area. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. Yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, it would just be that you would have to know if you're, say, a sports club in, um, I don't know where, Somerset or Yorkshire or where, <laughs> you would have to know where there is a sports suite active partnership place that you you know the platform that you could go to to register and, and add your sessions um well, one of the many things on my uh on my uh, bingo list brace is the just the kind of why don't we have just one one activity finder one thing where everyone just go spot him can buy one just buy one license and then everyone could just do the same thing they tried it before with spogo uh might be about 10 about 10 years ago now but that failed because it was just one system everyone had to use whereas mm -hmm. the open active is absolutely brilliant anyone can do it and it's the front end that you kind of would just need one front end and that can be filled with all the different back ends yeah um and i guess uh like you say that in a way there's nothing to say that you can direct to one of the platforms that already exist in in that way um but yeah that would be up to the, the kind of individual organizations who, who are trying to connect to the clubs and get them to publish data to, to do that i guess um but yeah that there, there's a couple that like you say there are a couple of different organizations that are offering that and and potentially a couple more um on the horizon as well um i think every everybody moves um campaign which is paralympics gb campaign are, are working towards um having a kind of facility for for inclusive mm um providers to be able to add inclusive sessions um in in that kind of free low cost simple data entry way as well so um who's running that uh, everybody moves is run by paralympics gb british paralympics association Who, um, who's the tech behind it uh i don't know exactly they, they have a kind of web web provider who's built their platform and, and they also work with i'm in as well oh i think the date from i'm in yes everyone else does okay because there's that is it first sports we looked at the other day yes i think so yeah so that, that's it that's a, yeah. oh. a few people to play with <laughs> yeah um happy to connect you with um i'll contact everybody moves if if you'd like to talk to them um i can't remember exactly off the top of my head what, what their um what their web uh url is but yeah if you just type everybody moves in um it should come up was talking to me uh, this week about uh, activity fine. Hold on, I'm just I was being pressed uh, press space bar to unmute, then realised I was trying to open email as well, so that didn't work. <laughs> um, the, 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 oh, give us. Uh, oh, I can't find. It. I'll put it in the chat. But there was there was a health based one. It, the one that's oh, is it moving, the one Scotland. you shared on Slack, the moving medicine one? I'm glad people remember what I do because I can't. <laughs> yeah, that that was one that kind of go. All oh, right, that's either someone's trying to do something from scratch and build up. Yeah, it's been around for a couple of years. That I, I've sort of come across it before, but in the past, they've been very much more focused on resources for health professionals, um, so resources for GPs and things like that, um, to be able to, um you know talk with their 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 I don't, what would you call a not really a client or a customer or a patient 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 um active referral yeah <laughs> talk yes, to their that's... patients about about physical activity but um it was really interesting that link you shared because it, it looks like they starting to move more into that directory activity finder type space so um yeah well, def definitely one that'd be useful to to speak with in, in terms of the open referral conversation but I, I don't know if either of you um caught the the messages around the w3c group but they um recently had a meeting um which was focused and, and they're going to focus over the next couple of months on um the relationship between open referral and, and open active 
Um, I don't think the recording has been published yet, but if um, if and when it when, when it does, it will be at some point. Um, I'll, I'll let you know and post it on Slack and things. But yeah, if you wanted to catch up with with that conversation, um, well, the, that's going the one on thing the I was WC group. Uh, probably one of the other things on my bingo board, uh, Grace, is the the activity that exists in a space and a time is one set of data, and the directory of where something is all the time two different things so sports week does have you can manage them both but you still have to go to a separate page and it's how you actually get that kind of data around because the sports club's going to be there for all, you know for years and years and years but if they don't have an active activity going at that particular time they don't exist on the system so it's it's how you're trying to build i call it the data zoo where you just have two completely different animals that you need to try and keep in the same zoo yeah, that's Quite great. And, I mean, this was pretty much all I had um, on this, but that might be a good segue into briefly talking about the the club finder stuff. I don't, I don't know if you'd be happy to talk about that, Darren, or or if not, um, I can I can briefly talk about it. Yeah. So, I mean, so I'm just getting into this in terms of what how I would pull this together in sort of technical sense, and it's exactly as Jules said. You know, you've got. Um, static data which isn't time-based and then you have time-based data which is streaming so at the moment open active is based around the notion that everything is streaming like it's got to be temporal there's events which come and go all the time and we have these rpd feeds which are constantly ticking by but a large chunk of that data you could essentially strip out and just say it just sits there and for some people, that data on its own is valuable, and that's all that they actually want to provide at this time. They, they might not necessarily want to or need to be showing their sort of time-based events. They just want to say, here I am, uh, this is who I am as an organizer, organizer, and these are my locations. One organizer could have multiple locations that they, they look after. That could just sit there. And so we're wondering for this sort of low-hanging fruit entry point for people that did just uh, want to approach Open Active from this um, stance, how to get them going and how to make this as simple as possible. And that could even be just um, enabling them access to a simple spreadsheet, um, which is then read by a um, like an API, which someone stewards and looks after and it sits there and it knows where all the spreadsheets are. And then it just reads them as needed. It could be updated daily or it could be updated as soon as you hit the API, it checks the spreadsheets, it pulls it in and gives you it dynamically. Um, I don't know if that would be absolutely needed because things probably wouldn't be changing so often, but it could be useful for some people to actually have it dynamically read if they do want to change something and instant, instantly, for example, remove one of their locations and have it gone from that exact minute um, or not. That's another conversation. The point being is that it's not outside of technical feasibility to do this. Um, so I'm having a little tinker around now to see exact to, to get like a working, very basic, minimal viable product uh, product to show that um, this is a proof of principle. This is what it looks like now. Also, what are the other implications around this, including people's wants and needs and any kind of political considerations about what Open Active is and, and does and so on and so forth. So that's where I'm coming from. I'm looking at the technical feasibility. What's technically possible? Can I put a little um, project together to, to show the proof of principle? That's where I'm, I'm, I'm currently at. We can then have the further conversation before it gets too crystallized to, to like really kind of lock it down in terms of their needs and make sure that they're actually that it's actually sort of satisfying um, the community and, and indications are that it is. I see that we got um, Zach on the call as well. And um, I'll be reaching out to you for a meeting next week as well. Uh, on this basis follow, following your email from the other day so uh yeah keep your eyes peeled on that one so that's where we are um tim i don't know uh what further you want to add on that please go ahead yeah no that's great um i think jules has got a question on that i, I was just going to highlight that um this work that darren's just been talking about um howard uh our other colleague at the odi um who works quite a bit with darren on the technical stuff um has uh, kind of written it up as a proposal and you should be able to find the link to that if you go to the open active slack uh, workspace and go to the general channel um, you should be able to find that message i think it's pretty much the last message that that is in that channel 
and where Howard's put the link uh, to that kind of proposal. So it'd be really great if um, you get the chance to have a look at that link um, and read through what what Howard's put on there and um, and add any feedback or comments. Um, we're we're really keen to get lots of um, lots of feedback from around the the community. Um, as Darren says, on kind of what the wants and needs are and, and use cases and things like that. Um, so yeah, it'd be, be really valuable um, to get your thoughts if, if you get the chance to have a look at that and add any comments. Yeah, and I think, um, so just the essence of the proposal is that open active, the open active standard essentially contains everything which is needed here for a club finder. It's just um, the, the wording and the technically what is right when you do open active doesn't really permit things which are not temporarily streaming um there's always this kind of time-based component so we were saying this is how you make the sort of static component this is how you make the temporal component and the two must always come together that's how it's worded and um, we just need to have it officially approved if that is the the will of the community to actually say you know what you can actually split the two if you just want to show static data that's fine too the system already allows that we're just kind of allowing those two to be um separated if you need it so um yeah it's just uh it's a, a variation on on the rules but the technical needs are minimal yeah and um just uh, one other thing I'll add as well is that that although we were saying a kind of club finder, you know, that's one potential use case. And um, we kind of see that, you know, potential that this data could be valuable just from a kind of st more strategic sense as well um, for, a, you know, an active partnership or local authority mapping provision in your areas or, or being able to better direct funding um, to different clubs if you have a much better and clearer picture of exactly what clubs are around and in what sports in your areas um, and also from a sport england kind of on a, on a national perspective as well being able to map that provision as well um jules i'll come to you and then um i don't want to put him on the spot but zach's here as well so i might come to him after as well but yeah jules go to you first uh, the one thing that all this always in the back of my mind and this one is active places because they will know 95 percent of where every sports facility and other things is and their site id is such a because it's a unique identifier that could be used for uh, deduplicating because obviously each person would put up their their list of all the clubs and then yorkshire would do one but then mgb would put one and a site id would actually incorporating that would mean that they would just be deduplicate all the entries that that's how i see the future going but it's not my job yeah and, and potentially it, it would be similar with with clubs so each club would, could potentially have a unique id as well and then you know you can start matching from different data sets as well but um when they, when they I, have so much data that it, when it's such yeah, a exactly, massive yeah. amount it, it it's got to be really yeah that, the one thing i would say about active places although it's brilliant for england it's only england so if you go to somewhere like wales or which you know might not be such a you know bother you so much being in your ship <laughs> but you know if 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 you're in wales or scotland or somewhere you don't have active places then perhaps we need to think about um oh god you, know, I, you don't, we don't really talk about the uh the other parts of the empire do we uh <laughs> so what um, does sport so, scotland have for the, a similar active I, places I, I don't think scott i know wales don't have anything like active places um i'm not sure about scotland as far as i know they don't have uh, an equivalent either so um but i might be wrong on that um zach thank you for joining um i don't know if there was anything you wanted to say about the work you're doing at london sport but um perhaps we can leave that for another day I, as i say i don't want to put you on the spot because um you haven't got anything prepared but if there was anything you wanted to add about the the club work you're doing then great but if if not no pressure i, I we can do thank that you. another day thank you tim i'm happy to give a bit of an update i'm sorry my webcam doesn't seem to be working today um so apologies for for being off camera but I'm happy to give a little bit of an update in terms of where we're at in, in creating our community club data standard. So we've been in the process of um, consulting a few NGBs as well as internally consulting with our community um, health experts um, to find out a little bit of their, their feedback in terms of what data fields should be included. 
And what we're realizing is that the further we delve into this, is the more complex it is becoming. Everybody has different um, opinions and feedbacks on what should be included and what data fields should or shouldn't be included. <clears throat> and our ambition is to keep the data standard as simple as possible. As Darren was, was mentioning, it's useful to onboard people who don't necessarily want to use the whole open active side of things, but just want to publish club information. And it's also a sort of an introduction into the, into the open data world for many of these community clubs. So we do want to keep it as simple as possible. For now, what we are thinking of doing is having a set of mandatory data fields. And these would be the basic information, club name, location, um, if they run sessions in another location or multiple locations, a contact email address or a contact number, a club website or a social URL, and the activity type. A few of these would be drop down menus. For example, the activity type would be open, act, open active activity list, which they can choose one or two from to be able to have that sort of um, uh, data from open active fed into the community club data standard. We don't want to have too many different fields from that perspective either as well. And then we have a few optional fields, which would be a description field. We're thinking of having a club mark tip, tick box. We're not sure if that's still applicable, but it's a feedback that we've received. Um, and then a few other optional fields, such as whether the community club caters to juniors, adults, or both, whether it's a male only, female only, or open to all community clubs, and what's the level at which they're operating at. The issue that we're having is, is in terms of accessibility. Um, in terms of what should we include in the accessibility field and is it something that we should include in this simple community club data standard the feedback that we're getting is that each ngbs obviously use their own terminology for accessibility we have our own terminology in terms of how it's how it's displayed in open sessions and open active um and th that's where the sort of complexity lies in regards to that so we're trying to find a way to be able to to work through that and thinking about how we can include that i know the odi has been doing some work in regards to to sort of an accessibility standard, um, but I can understand the complexity of it having delved into this a little bit myself. So uh, we are in communication as well with a few um, leading leading organizations in the accessibility field, for example, UK Deaf Sport, just to get their opinion on how we can potentially include the accessibility side of things as well. But yeah, that's pretty much where we're at in terms of this. Um, we should have a first draft complete probably by the beginning of next week, and I'll be happy to share that and, and get everyone's feedback on that. Fantastic, thanks, Zach. That's a really useful update. Um, and just on the on terms of the accessibility one, um, have you spoken to everybody moves at all? The, the um, GB or not yet. Yeah, but it's definitely in our list of people to contact uh, to speak to them. So we're we're thinking of speaking to. We've spoken to UK Lab Sport, and we're thinking of speaking to everybody moves sense and uh, and England Blind Sport as well, UK Blind Sport as well um yeah and get everyone's feedback the, the thing that we are realizing activity alliance is is a good one as well thank you jules um the thing that we're realizing is that the more we consult on the accessibility side of things the more complex it gets and so we were trying to find the balance in terms of being able to have everyone on the same same sort of path in terms of what should we define as accessibility and how should we include that in the club community data standard definitely that sounds um that sounds great yeah and i I think it's a, as you say, kind of a definitely a tricky one in terms of the club because from the, the work we've been doing, a lot of the kind of accessibility stuff is the data is attached to other things. So it's, you know, the facility um, or the location and, and, you know, is there car parking? What surface is the car park? Is there um, step-free access? You know, all of those types of things um, and the activity itself, you know, what equipment it is and, and um you know are the coaches you know trained you know, all those kind of questions which um yeah how you how you would distill that down into into yeah. a, a simple thing for a, for a club club i don't know yeah. about having to have all that other data as well it's a, a tricky one absolutely yeah the, the other thing that has come up as well um in some of our conversations is the question of affiliation as well should we should we record what clubs are affiliated how do we go about in recording that the issue is, is, for example, if we have an affiliation tick, tick box where clubs can just tick that they're affiliated, it's, it's very difficult to ensure data quality. Clubs who are, might, might not be affiliated might tick the affiliation box and vice versa. <clears throat> and so this whole affiliation aspect of things is also a little bit complex. I'm guessing, for example, if we gather data from directories of NGBs, all of those clubs would be affiliated. 
but for and from an ngb perspective knowing what clubs aren't affiliated would be useful to them because it would allow them to map what clubs they could potentially reach out to and try and garner further affiliation as well so finding that balance is, is another another complexity that we're finding yeah really interesting um did anyone have any questions for Zach or any further thoughts on the club stuff? Um, if not, then uh, we'll probably move it on to any other business. So yeah, any any comments or questions or thoughts on, on anything? Nope. I'll think of any. Oh, wow. That's a first. <laughs> <laughs> um how full is your bingo card jewels from this meeting yeah we, we, we know you, you hit at least two things i think <laughs> are you on mute i think he's just bear, to, bear with that check. Gonna, double check his, his actual double check bingo card <laughs> <laughs> um cool well, just while Jules is quickly doing that, then I'll probably say that um, if if there is nothing else, we can probably bring the bring the meeting to a close once once Jules has ticked off his bingo card. Do you know what? I can't find it? I'll have to go back and we'll report later. Okay. Well, maybe you can watch watch the recording, and that would be a <laughs> nice weekend entertainment for you. I think I've covered most of the things I usually whine about. So yes, brilliant. Cool. I'm really excited to hear about the uh, work you're doing, Darren. That sounds really good. I've been speaking to uh, Zach and Chris on email as well, so I think we are we certainly feel like we're building quite a sea change here, which is great. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah, and um, I, took, I don't know if you were on the call at the time, Zach, um, but yeah, I was saying to Jules and Grace and anyone watching the recording that um, Howard... Uh, from the ODI has um, put a proposal for the club stuff on to GitHub and there's a link to that on the Open Active Slack in the general channel so yeah really welcome any comments or feedback or, or thoughts um, on, on that and, and getting the conversation going around around that proposal so um, yeah that'd be, that'd be really great if if you get the chance to have a look at, and add any comments in there. Definitely yeah I'm happy to, to have a look I must say I really like how collaborative this environment is in terms of all, all of us working to work together towards a common goal. And I believe that's the best way to, to be able to achieve any kind of change, really. Yeah, definitely. And exactly what these these meetings and what Open Active is, uh, is trying, to, trying to do and, and trying to be all about. So that's great. Cool. Well, thank you very much for joining, everyone. Sorry, it was a slightly um, sort of more bitty meeting today and and um you know not not quite so many people here but um i really appreciate you joining it and taking the time to contribute because i think it's been a really really valuable meeting even even with just a, a few voices here um so thank you very much and um hope to see you again soon and uh hope you all have a good weekend <laughs>